I'm standing here in my backyard in what will be my vegetable garden for the season and it's time to fertilize in preparation for my planting. Now even though plants make their own food through a process called photosynthesis, as plants grow they remove nutrients from the soil. So we need to provide these basic ingredients, in other words the nutrients, for optimal growth and to maintain our soil fertility. This chart demonstrates some of the nutrients that are removed as crops grow during the growing season. In order to know what you need, you should test your soil. And I'll cover this, the details of this, in a future video. The results from a soil test will help you to determine how much fertilizer to actually use during the course of the season. Now, once you know how much you need, what we normally recommend is broadcast all of the phosphorus and potassium required and two-thirds of the required nitrogen. So let's say, for example, that our soil test results indicated that we had a need for three pounds of phosphorus and two pounds of potassium. And for nitrogen, the general recommendation for a vegetable garden is three actual pounds of nitrogen per year per thousand square feet. So let's say, for instance, I decide to use 62424 to supply my phosphorus and potassium. And the reason I selected that material is because that particular analysis is high in both of those nutrients. Now the number on the bag is called the analysis and it represents what nutrients and the percentage of each by weight that's in the bag. For example, 62424 means that the bag contains 6% actual nitrogen and 24% actual phosphorus and potassium because they're both 24%. So if you want to know exactly how much nitrogen is in the bag, you multiply the percentage and you express it as a decimal, which would be 0 0.06, times the weight of the bag. And let's say our bag was 50 pounds for ease of calculation. So that means this bag will have three actual pounds of nitrogen in it. And you would do the same thing for figuring out how much actual phosphorus and potassium are in the bag. So in this case, it would be 0.24 times 50, again, the 50 pounds, which means we have 12 pounds of actual phosphorus and potassium in the bag. So the total fertilizer in the bag, in terms of the actual nutrients, would be determined by adding the 3 plus the 12 plus the 12, which comes out to 27 pounds of actual nutrients in that 50-pound bag. So the remaining 23 pounds of that 50-pound bag is what we call the nutrient carrier. Now going back to my soil test, since the soil test results recommended 3 pounds of phosphorus, the way you determine how much of that 624.24 that you're going to need is take 3 and divide it by 0.24, which again is the percentage expressed as a decimal. That comes out to 12 and a half pounds. And as, again, as I mentioned before, this is per thousand square feet. So in order to supply all the phosphorus we need, we put on 12.5 pounds per thousand square feet of the 624.24. Now since the ratio of phosphorus and potassium are the same, they're both 24%, then that means we will also be adding three pounds of actual potassium, which is one more than we originally mentioned that we needed. That should be okay. But another option that I could have exercised would have been to buy specific nutrients individually. For instance, I could have used urea 4600 as my nutrient source, uh, triple superphosphate as my phosphorus source, which is 0,460. And then I could have used muriate of potash, which is 0,060, as my source of potassium. It's a little bit more work, and as I mentioned before, um, being a little bit over isn't going to be a critical thing, especially when we're talking about potassium. We usually need to add more potassium to the soils around here than we do phosphorus anyway. Now, remember, when we put on that 12.5 pounds of the 624.24 per thousand square feet, we are also putting on some nitrogen. Now, you remember I mentioned earlier that we need two pounds of actual nitrogen per thousand square feet over the, before we start planting. And um, since we're only going to need three pounds for the whole season, then we're, that's why we're putting on two thirds. So in order to figure out how much nitrogen we're still going to need because there's 6% in the 
in that uh, 624 24 that we applied what we will then do is subtract 0 0.075 from the 2. So where did the 0.75 come from? What you do is you multiply the 0 0.06, which represents 6% nitrogen, times the amount that we apply, which is 12.5 pounds per thousand square feet, and that comes out to 0.75 pounds. So we subtract the 0.75 pounds from the two because we're going to put that down with the 62424. And that leaves us with a need of 1.25 pounds of actual nitrogen. Now I said we're going to use urea as our nitrogen source. So in order to figure out how much urea we need to put down in order to finish applying the nitrogen that we're gonna need before planting, what we would do is um, divide the 1.25 by 0.46. The 1.25 is the nitrogen we still need after we've accounted for what we put on with the 62424. And we're taking into consideration that we're using urea, which is 0.46. So we divide 1.25 by 0.46, and it comes up to 2.7 pounds. So we put on 2.7 pounds of urea per 1,000 square feet of area, and that will give us the rest of the nitrogen that we need. Now, this process is the same whether you are using a commercially available fertilizer or whether you are using an organic source. Every fertilizer that you buy at the store has to have an analysis on it so you'll be able to do these calculations. Now, it may seem like a lot of work, but uh, after you've done it a couple of times, then it becomes very clear as to how it works. And don't be overwhelmed by the mathematics. If you still are overwhelmed, you can consult your local extension um, agent or horticulture educator, whatever they, whatever they call them in your state, and they can help you to calculate this. Some people like to also apply manure. If you're going to apply manure to your garden, apply the manure and till it in, and then take your soil sample, because most soil testing labs will take that into consideration when they make the recommendations for nutrients. If you want to know the nutrient content that you're applying when you put on manure, you can look this up on the internet, like you can Google analysis of horse manure or something like that, or you can buy something like an organic gardening encyclopedia, which will generally have an analysis for different types of manure. Whatever you decide to use, make the application about seven to 10 days before you plan on planting, and the method we're gonna use is called broadcast application. Now, most of you are probably familiar with the handheld crank broadcast spreader, but I have a new garden toy that I picked up this year. Um, as a matter of fact, I first found out about it as I was watching a YouTube video and one of those commercials that most people like to skip through showed this. So uh, I liked it. Anyway, this is it. It's called the Wiz and it's a battery powered uh, applicator. And all I have to do is put my fertilizer in here in the hopper and then depress this little switch right here and off I go. And no more of this cranking. Now, one of the things you might want to consider, especially if it's a windy day, you may want to wear a dust mask. Um, it's pretty calm today, so I'm gonna hold this close to the ground and make the application. But uh, you do not uh, want to inhale any kind of fertilizer dust. It's not good for your lungs. So once the fertilizer has been applied, then you should till it in, and then you'll be ready to plant in about a week. Now, especially if you have urea being applied, you should till it under or water it in because when urea is left on the surface, up to a third of it will convert to nitrogen gas and you will lo lose that amount of nitrogen. So get it tilled in and then you'll be ready to plant pretty quickly. So those are the tips for the day. I hope you found them useful and uh, I will see you later as we develop the vegetable garden.